In section 1.3, we will talk about average rate of change. And this is just an introduction to what's called the simplified difference quotient. And the difference quotient is how we define the derivative in the next section. So this is just a kind of a section to get you mentally prepared to what we're about to do later on and so that you can understand what the concept of derivative is going to be like. Now, the words average rate of change is just a fancy way of saying the slope of the line. So the, the average rate of change is this formula that you're seeing right here. And it pretty much describes on the numerator, the rise, and on the denominator, the run. So the rise is basically the amount between the two points vertically, whereas the run is the amount between the two points horizontally. So if you take those two numbers and divide them out, then you get what's called the average rate of change. Why do we call it average rate of change? Because the points that we're discussing in these sections are going to be on certain graphs. So maybe they are on the graph of x squared, or maybe they're on the graph of x cubed, or something else like that. So there's a function involved in the process. It's not just two random points. So again, um, we use fancy calculus notation in this class to refer to the average rate of change. So instead of calling it y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, sometimes you'll see f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So keep in mind that f of x2 and f of x1 are just the y2 and the y1. They are the y coordinates of the points that you have in the problem. And x2 and x1 are the x coordinates of those points. Now if you connect those two points together, you get this blue line right here in the middle, and that blue line is typically called the secant line because it cuts the curve, it cuts the red curve into different spots. That's why it's called the secant line. So in example one, they will basically give us a bunch of points, like in this case, the numbers are one and three, and they want the average rate of change. So your goal in this problem is to find the slope of this line right there. And to do this is very straightforward. You're going to start with the function f of x. And first of all, you need to know f of x2. In this case, the x2 is going to be the second point in the pair. The x2 is in this case, three. So we're going to figure out what f of three is. So f of three is going to be the function which is x squared, where you replace x with the number three. And the answer turns out to be nine. So in this case, nine represents the y coordinate of the second point. Then you will do the f of x1, the y coordinate of the first point, which in this case is going to be f of one, because in this particular problem, one represents the x1. So again, x3 is gonna be the x2, and x equal one is gonna represent x sub one. So in this case, one squared will be again equal to one. So now what is the average rate of change? It's basically f of the x2 minus f of the x1 divided by the x2 minus x1. So in other terms, it's nine minus one divided by three minus one. So this is eight divided by two, which is going to be four. So the rise over the run in this case is equal to four. So the slope of this line is equal to four. That's what this means. Very straightforward, very simple. So we can do this again a few more times. And obviously we can use calculators to speed up the process. You don't always have to do everything by hand. So for this time, we are changing from two to one or from one to two, depending on how you look at it. So X two is going to be two. X one is going to be one. So F of two is going to be two squared because the function is x squared and that's going to be four eventually and f of x one meaning f of one is going to be one squared again and the answer here is going to be still a number one so when you do the average age of change you're going to do four minus one divided by two minus one and the answer is going to be three divided by one which is ultimately three so in this case three represents the slope of the line connecting one and two together. Why did I do one and two? Because that's the question in this part of the problem. They just said find the rate of change from one to two. And again, we will do the same thing in the last part where X is changing from two to three. So in this case, the three represents the second coordinate in the list. So we're gonna put it in place of X two. 
So that's going to be a three right there. And the function is x squared. So three squared is going to be nine ultimately. And x1 is going to represent the number two in this particular problem. So that's what we put in place of the x1. So two and the function is x squared. So two squared will be four. And then we transfer the numbers to the fraction nine minus four, nine came as a result of plugging in the three. So we put the three underneath it. Four came as a result of plugging in the two. So we put the two underneath it. So make sure that the orders match. And so nine minus four is gonna be five, three minus two is going to be one, and the answer is going to be five. So out of these three problems, the third line has the steepest slope. So, you know, that's, that's great. And that's where the problem ends.